Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. Today I'll show you how you can create a macro in Microsoft Word that will automatically resize images in a document. I like this macro and use it a lot because I copy a lot of stuff from the internet. Now I've gone and grabbed this from my own website and you'll see that some of the images here are quite large and if I went to print this I could save sheets of paper by shrinking the images down a lot smaller. This is a pretty small document. Quite a lot of the ones that I bring in from the web are very, very large. And so I don't want to have to go through them and do each image one at a time. So a macro that does the job is awesome. To start off with, you have to have the develop tab available. If you don't have developer there, choose file and then options. Go to customize ribbon and look for developer in this right hand panel. Enable it and click OK. Go to the Developer tab, click Visual Basic because you need to open the Visual Basic Editor. For every document you currently have open and some additional things that you might have installed, there's going to be something in the Project area. You can't see this, choose View Project Explorer. You're going to select Normal because you want to add things to the Normal file. You'll select Normal and choose Insert and then Use a Form because you need to add a form and the Forms area will open up. You might already have some forms, you may have none, it doesn't matter. So we're going to create a User Form here. You'll need the Toolbox. If you don't see it, choose View and then Toolbox. And while you're there, choose View and Properties window because you need that as well. Now the Properties window sometimes is docked over here. I don't have mine docked, I have it floating. I like it better that way, but that's fine. So I'm going to target my form and let's go and get some command buttons. So we need two of these. I'm going to grab one and then another one, deliberately making these all look pretty poor. Select one, shift click on the other, choose format, make same size both to make them both the same size. And then if you've got your toolbars visible, choose view and then toolbars. I've got edit standard and user form all visible. Then you'll have an alignment option here. I'm just using align tops. And I can sort of move them into position so they're neat in the form. We need a couple of labels, so we need one big label. I'm going to drag out a big label across the top of the form. Our instructions are going in there. We need another small label just about here. It can be tiny, don't worry that the word label may or may not fit. doesn't matter right now. You need a text box and it's going to be a tiny text box about here. And you need a spin button. So this is the spin button here and that's going to be a little bit longer. Now all the data entry is going to be via the spin button and we're going to lock down this box so that you can't type in words yourself, so numbers, so we're going to control it that way. Let's go to the label first. I'm clicking on the label and in the properties here we've got the caption property. So I'm just going to select that and type my own text. I'm typing exit and save the file before continuing so you can recover if the macro fails. To run the macro, select an image width and click resize images or exit to exit. Just some basic instructions. The text is pretty small. I'll go to the font command here, click this little ellipsis and I'm going to set my font size to something like 10. It's a little bit more visible here. We'll go to the text box and set that up. And for the text box, we need its value property. So you're just going to scroll down to the value property and you'll type in two. Now these properties are in alphabetical order, just makes it a little easier to move around, except that the name property is always at the top. Don't be confused about that. Now we want to lock it down. So let's just go, I'm making sure I've got the text box selected and let's just click on locked and that will set it to true. And so it's locked check that I've got the value in there. The label, we're going to change its caption property here to inches. We'll go to command button one and we're going to set its caption property to resize images. And command button two, its caption property is going to be exit. And finally, we need to set up our spin button control. So click on it. Now we need to set a few properties for this. We need to set its maximum. Its maximum is going to be 120. Its minimum is going to be 20 and its small change, which is what it is going to increment or decrement when you click on these buttons, is going to be 5. So you need to set all three of those properties. We'll go to the user form itself. You can see that it's called user form over here. It would be better if it had a better name. 
Now this name here has to be all one word. I'm going to call it image resize. And so that's now going to be the form name. But of course that hasn't changed the caption on the form, which is something completely different. So with the form selected, we're going to change its caption property here. And it's change image width in inches. In other words, we're going to set the width and the height is going to be automatically created for us. So that's got all of the elements in our form and you can just tidy up your form if you want to, given that you can now see how it's all going to look. I'll double click on the command button because I need to insert my code and in the description below I'm going to give you access to a text file that has the code in it. So I'm just going to go and grab my code. Now when you grab the code you can see that the sub and end sub statements are already provided for you so you don't bring those across because you can't have double sets of those. So just bring the stuff inside the sub and end sub statements. Let's go back and we also need to set up some code for our spin button. So I'm double clicking on that and that sets up the spin button one change event. I'm going to go and get the code for that. And you'll find that here again between the sub and end sub statements. You just have to grab this piece of code. It's just a single line of code. And then we need to code the exit button as well. Double click on that and that's just going to be unload me. So when you click the exit button, the form is going to unload. Let's have a look at the remainder of the code though, because that's pretty important. Here are just some declarations and this is a setting that converts the values that we see in this box here, the numbers to inches in other words, into something that Microsoft Word can handle because Microsoft Word doesn't work in inches or centimeters, it works in points. And so we have to multiply that number by 72 to convert inches to points and Microsoft Word can then deal with an image size that has to be in points. Now we've got two pieces of code here and the reason for this is that some pictures are set as pictures and some pictures are set as shapes and it just depends whether their wrap is set to inline with text or a word wrap option. So when their wrap is set to inline with text they're one thing and when their wrap is set to something different they're something else and so we're having to deal with both situations. So we're going to select the image and we're going to work through every single one of each type of image in the document. We're going to work out if the image itself, if its width is larger than the value we want to make it. So if it's big and we want to make it smaller, then do all of these things. But if it's already small, it's not going to be enlarged. So it's not going to be caught by this if statement. What we're going to do is we're going to make its width the width that we want it to be and then we'll make a calculation to see what its height needs to be because we have to scale this in proportion because we don't want smooshed images. So we do it for inline with text and we do it for regular images. Just exactly the same code pretty much. Just making sure that we work through both sets of images in the document. When we're done we're just going to unload it. So that's taken care of the main code. The code on the spin button just says when we make a change to the spin button, when we click here or here, it's going to change by five and the value of the spin button, which is isolated in here. And when we make a change, it says go and do whatever the spin button says, divide it by 20 and pop it over here. So we're sort of scaling this value here by coding the spin button. Just a nice simple way of having a spin button do things and feed whatever we want to see in terms that we understand into this box here. So we've pretty much got everything except something to run this and to run this we need a module. So I'm going to modules area here, I'm going to choose insert module and this is really simple. We're just going to type sub and then whatever the macro name is going to be. So I'm going to call this change image width and then open and close round brackets. As soon as you hit enter you're going to get your end sub statement and what we have to do is run our form and so our form is called image resize. So whatever you named your form you're just going to type image resize dot show. You have to make sure that this name is identical to this name otherwise it's going to fail. So having done that you can now go and save your file. 
I have a test document here already open and so let's go and see how it works. I'm going to the macros button here in the developer or I can just go to view and then macros. Here's our change image width macro. I'll click to run it. Here's our form and we can now select how big we want it to be. So it goes from one inch all the way up to six inches. And since the document area is effectively about six and a half inches, that lets you still have big images. But of course, you'll probably want to reduce the size. So I'm going to protect this one. So this one is about two and a half inches wide. So let's make all of these about three inches wide. And we should not see any change in this one because we don't want it to get bigger. We just want the big ones to get smaller. Once you've got your size, just click resize images and the macro goes all the way through the document and simply resizes the images. Hasn't touched this one. All of these are now taken down to three inches in width. And that's shrunk the document quite considerably. And of course you can do it even smaller. Let's just go and run it again. And this time let's choose two inches. And so that first image, of course, its size is now going to be reduced as will the width of every other image in the document if it's not already two inches or smaller, it's going to be sized to be two inches. Because you've saved this macro into normal dot dot, it's going to be available to any document in future. So you can just go to the macros window and select your macro and run it. I hope that you really like this macro. As I said, I use it all the time and I hope that now you're able to create it for yourself. So look out for the macro code in the description below. Also, please, if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up, click the subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you'll be alerted when new videos are released. Until next time, I'm Helen Bradley. Thank you so much for joining me here on my YouTube channel.